Hi, it's Katrina. From a city covered in ash to hieroglyphics in Peru, here are 10 of the wildest and most unbelievable archaeological coincidences. Number 10. The Pleiades Constellation The Pleiades Constellation is often known as the Seven Sisters, and it is a star cluster seen in the constellation of Taurus. These stars are some of the most obvious that you can see with the naked eye at night. The stars are distinctly blue and can be seen hovering inside a faint cloud of space dust. They are depicted by almost every ancient society on Earth, from the Greeks to the Chinese and from the Maya to the indigenous tribes of North America. Everywhere you go on Earth, the Seven Sisters are depicted in one way or another. This star cluster has served as a calendar to help mark seasons for many civilizations. When the cluster appeared, it marked the beginning of navigation season in the Mediterranean. For the Zuni tribe, it was time to plant seeds. For the Druids, when the Pleiades reached its highest point in the sky, it meant that the veil between the dead and the living was at its thinnest. Sometimes you can see six, not seven, Pleiades stars, and the so-called lost star also seems to have a universal theme. The astronomer Robert Burnham Jr. found the lost Pleiad myth in stories told by European, African, Asian, Indonesian, Native American, and Aboriginal Australian people. And there is a reason for that. The seventh star, Pleione, is different because it is a shell star that varies in brightness, so sometimes it gets lost. But there is no way that ancient people would know this. They just observed that sometimes they could see it and sometimes they couldn't. Each culture has a slightly different story behind the stars. In Greek mythology, the seven sisters are the daughters of Atlas and Pleione. And in modern science, they are actually considered siblings as well, because they were born from the same cloud of gas and dust 100 million years ago. In Hindu mythology, the stars represent the six wives of the six sages. Even in the ancient Maori traditions, the stars are seen as a mother with her six daughters. The seven sisters have been painted on cave walls, displayed in temples, and seen alongside ancient gods all over the earth. But what they all have in common is that they are always depicted as female. But why? This is the big question. Nowhere in the ancient world are the seven stars of the Pleiades constellation depicted as being men. And while it does make sense that different ancient cultures would draw the same stars, after all, everyone would have seen the constellation no matter where they were, it's quite curious that they all showed the stars as women. Mothers or daughters, sisters or wives. Number 9. Mayan Pompeii Pretty much everyone is familiar with the legendary Pompeii, the city that was buried in ash when Mount Vesuvius erupted in Italy. But did you know that almost the exact same thing happened in El Salvador? Human remains have just been discovered for the first time in El Salvador's Joya de Serén, a city which was also buried by an almost identical volcanic eruption that happened about 1400 years ago. The archaeological site is often referred to as the Mayan Pompeii because of its startling similarities. El Salvador's Ministry of Culture reports that the cataclysmic eruption of the nearby Loma Caldera volcano ruined a ton of Mayan sites in the area, but helped to preserve the entire city of Joya de Serén preserving everything in almost perfect condition, frozen in time, just like Pompeii. Here, the volcanic eruption happened in 535 AD, hundreds of years after the incident at Pompeii, which was in 79 AD. It's believed that this volcanic eruption, or several at the same time in Central America and Iceland, changed the world forever, plunging it into darkness with its effects felt all over the world. The atmosphere was filled with ash, blocking the sun and making everything cold. Crops died, disease spread, wars began, and 536 became the worst year to be alive. Like Pompeii and Herculaneum in Italy, the remains of Joya de Seren were discovered in exceptional condition. Unfortunately, not as much research has been done in El Salvador compared to Italy, and it was the first time that human remains have been found in the city covered in ash. This person died before the eruption and was buried with an obsidian knife. Excavations are slowly ongoing as researchers wait for funding to uncover what life was like in the Maya city in 535. Number 8. Ancient Designer Handbags All over the world, statues built by ancient cultures have been spotted holding mysterious handbags. Nobody is really sure what these handbags represent, although the lack of evidence hasn't stopped conspiracy theorists from labeling them as proof of time travel, saying that ancient deities were returning from the future with designer bags. This probably isn't the case, just throwing that out there, and it's more likely that the handbags shown in the statues were just ordinary bags. But then, it is a little suspicious that the exact same bags can be seen in depictions from Mesopotamia all the way to Mexico. 
It's likely that both cultures used bags to carry things, but why would they have similar handbags being held by gods carved in stone? What is this mysterious purse? Writer Carrie Sullivan points out that the shape has appeared in depictions made by the Sumerians of Iraq, in the ruins of ancient Turkish temples, in decorations of the Maori of New Zealand, and in crafts made by the Olmecs of Central America. Handbags can be seen in the art of disparate cultures from around the world and throughout time, with the first known instance of a handbag appearing at the end of the Ice Age. They are probably not bags at all, but baskets. The baskets are most likely symbols, representing ancient knowledge held by only those at the highest ranks of society in ancient cultures. What were all these cultures trying to show? One theory is that it is a representation of the cosmos. The square represents the Earth, and the semicircle that makes the bag strap is the hemisphere of the sky, and together they form one, the material and the non-material. In this depiction, it would be easier for common people to understand these abstract concepts. The oldest representation of the handbag can be found in Gobekli Tepe, one of the oldest temple complexes ever discovered and possibly the beginning of religion. There are animals, gods, and three handbags. And now for number seven. But first, let me know what you think is the biggest coincidence between cultures around the world in the comments below. And remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Number seven, the winged sun disk. The winged sun disk is one of the oldest and most important symbols that can be found throughout all of the ancient world. It can be seen in many different variations, from the Sumerians to the Assyrians. The winged sun disk is a sign often associated with royalty and power. It can be found in the ruins of ancient Egypt, the dusty relics of Persia, and even in more obscure archaeological sites in Anatolia. The symbol itself is almost always a circular disk being carried on the wings of a bird. In Egypt, the bird is the god Horus and the disc in the middle represents the sun. However, there are a lot of different variations of this. For example, sun discs can also be found being held by a pair of cobras with opened hoods. Then there is different symbolism. In China, the winged sun disc is a symbol of perfection, while in India it symbolizes a rise to a higher sphere of existence. And then there is even the occult to consider, in which the winged sun disc is a symbol of power and often used with tarot cards. As for its origins, the winged sun disk appeared in the Old Kingdom of Egypt from between 2600 and 2180 BC, before eventually being adopted in Asia at around 2000 BC. The symbol moved into the Kingdom of Judah in the 8th century BC, and it can still be seen in pop culture today. Nobody knows exactly why this seemingly ordinary depiction of the sun riding on the wings of a bird managed to spread throughout the world and persist for over 4,000 years but it's one of the longest-lasting symbols in human history. Number 6. Mummies Around the World The practice of preserving a dead body through mummification was once widespread across all of the earth, and nobody is really sure why. The ancient Egyptians are obviously the most famous for this ritualistic behavior, but it has been practiced everywhere, including Australia, Europe, Africa, North America, and of course, South America. Every region on Earth has practiced mummification, and the practice often went on for thousands of years. It was usually seen as a way to honor the dead, but just where exactly did the idea come from? This is the big question everyone has on their minds, because it almost seems like someone would have needed to teach our ancient ancestors how to do this. Otherwise, it doesn't really make much sense. Why would every culture on Earth instinctively want to preserve their bodies and turn them into mummies? This question has never been answered. From the self-mummification practices of ancient monks, to the highly advanced embalming practices of ancient Egypt, and the ice mummies of Russia, to the Chinchorro people of South America who made mummies 2,000 years before the Egyptians, nobody knows why so many cultures did this in different ways without ever meeting each other. It's something that is just universal that all early civilizations wanted to do, and many people wonder who or what taught them how to do this. Number 5. Stone Circles Stone circles have been found all over the world, and while Stonehenge in England is definitely the most well-known Neolithic site, it is only one of many. Just in the UK, there are many other standing stones, such as the Kalanish Stones in Scotland that are believed to be around 5,000 years old and constructed by a society of unknown people. Then there is the Drombeg Stone Circle in Ireland, which is around 3,000 years old and may have been used for ritual sacrifices. In France, there is an army of around 3,000 megalithic standing stones in Brittany, all of which date back to around 4,500 BC. That's about 7,000 years ago. In South Korea, there is the Go Chang Dolmen site, which consists of huge stone structures much like the ones at Stonehenge, only there are thousands of them constructed across the landscape and still standing today. 
And don't forget the deer stones found scattered across Siberia and Mongolia. There are about 1,200 of these standing stones that were erected around 3,000 years ago and stand roughly 13 feet tall. Then you have those in Spain, Denmark, Morocco, the list goes on and on. The coincidence here is, of course, that ancient civilizations from every corner of the globe constructed eerily similar stone circles, most of which were used for sacrifice, for tracking the stars, and for other things that we are still trying to uncover. Number 4. Oak Island Oak Island is one of the most mysterious locations on Earth, with so many artifacts being uncovered from so many different cultures that nobody can make sense of it. Oak Island is located in Nova Scotia, Canada. It has been surrounded by legends and rumors of a lost treasure, and of course is the site of the TV show, The Curse of Oak Island, on the History Channel. Theories range from gold brought over secretly by the Knights Templar to Captain Kidd pirate booty. Treasure hunters have been excavating and searching for hundreds of years. One of the biggest finds ever was a lead cross. Testing showed that the lead cross came from southern France, meaning it probably was brought to Canada from Europe sometime between 1200 and 1400. This is some of the best evidence that suggests the Knights Templar arrived in North America far before Christopher Columbus. But things get even weirder and more coincidental. A garnet brooch was found dating back 500 years and was also apparently from France, and iron spikes from the 1700s were also found. Human bones have been dug up, pottery, and even a stone carved in what many believe to be ancient Viking runes. The big mystery with Oak Island is the sheer scope of artifacts from different cultures that have been found. From the Knights Templar to the Vikings, it's hard to believe that something big wasn't going on with this island hundreds of years ago. Otherwise, it would be an awful big coincidence that so many treasures from so many different civilizations ended up on a random island off the coast of Canada. Number 3. Peruvian Hieroglyphics Hieroglyphics have been found in the highlands of Peru, leading some to speculate that ancient South American cultures may have somehow had communication with ancient Egyptian people, since the hieroglyphics are kind of similar. The hieroglyphics were found carved in stones that had likely been used as building blocks for ancient structures. These blocks were found near the small town of Huaro, and they were recently inspected by a professional anthropologist from the local museum. They were interpreted as being symbols of the origins of life, and are believed to be crafted by an unknown culture who lived in the same region hundreds of years ago. Based on the enormous geoglyphs found in Peru, it is not hard to believe that ancient people in the area would have made smaller hieroglyphics as well, just like the ancient Egyptians. Unfortunately, there are not as many examples of the hieroglyphics in Peru. Many of these civilizations disappeared thousands or hundreds of years ago, and then when the Spanish arrived in the 16th century, they destroyed pretty much everything else. There is no evidence left really as to whether ancient cultures were in contact with each other or not. Number 2. The Swastika Today, the swastika is a symbol of hate and violence after it was used by the Nazi party during the Second World War. However, you might like to know that the swastika has a more peaceful and benign origin. It came from the Sanskrit word swastika, which meant conducive to well-being. It has been found throughout the entire world on all kinds of ancient artifacts. In fact, the oldest known representation in the world dates back 15,000 years. It was found in 1908 in Ukraine, carved into the side of a mammoth tusk. It is a cross with each leg bent at a 90-degree angle, and has been used by many ancient religions. It was supposed to represent good luck, the infinity of creation, and the revolving sun. It may also have been an ancient fertility symbol. Many cultures adopted it throughout North America and Europe independently. In Eastern Europe, the ancient Vinca culture created these carvings 7,000 years ago. The legendary Illyrians used it to symbolize the sun, and the Mesopotamian Empire stamped the symbol on coins. It was on vases and clothing in ancient Greece, it was used in mosaics in ancient Rome, and there are even depictions of Thor's hammer with this symbol. And of course, the coincidences here can go on forever. It was a popular symbol in Hinduism and Buddhism and can be seen all across Asia even today. In 2007, when German politicians attempted to introduce a swastika ban across the European Union, Hindus strongly opposed the measure on religious grounds. No one has any idea why the symbol became so popular for 15,000 years. Unfortunately, it was ruined when the universal prehistoric religious symbol was taken over by German nationalists to support their idea of an ancient Aryan master race. They took a symbol of good luck and hope and made it stand for hatred and fear. Now there is much debate as to whether the symbol can be reclaimed. Number 1. Pyramids The Egyptians, the Mayans, the Mesopotamians, the Nubians, the Aztecs, everyone built pyramids. 
Pyramids can be found all over the globe, and the amazing thing is that they basically all look identical. According to Smithsonian Magazine, there are over 100 pyramids in Egypt alone. And even though the Egyptian pyramids are the most well-known, they are hardly the most impressive. The pyramids at Teotihuacan in Mexico are just as impressive, with the largest being the Pyramid of the Sun, with a square base about 730 feet wide. Every ancient culture of the Earth built pyramids of varying size and shape. For example, there are hundreds of pyramids in central Sudan, what was once the Kingdom of Nubia. However, the pyramids here are smaller than their Egyptian neighbors, and narrower. An Italian explorer even broke one of the Nubian pyramids open, hoping to find some treasure inside. He didn't, and the pyramid still stands broken today. Of course, many people would have you believe that the pyramids were used as beacons for contacting extraterrestrials. Either that, or they were at least built with the help of extraterrestrials. But the truth is, that's probably not what happened. Almost all of the pyramids were likely built as a universal symbol of reaching to the heavens and as special burial places. Thanks for watching! Do you think the ancient cultures of the world are connected? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time!